VIU Online presents GEC 101 English Composition, Week 7 Practical Lecture, Academic and Professional Writing. This lecture is presented by Dr. Laura Hills, Professor of English at Virginia International University. There are special challenges when writing for different disciplines. But what does that mean practically? Well, let's imagine that you are writing a research paper for a course in the humanities. When writing for the humanities, you will need to pose questions and construct hypotheses as you read. You will use your questions and hypotheses to create fuller meaning, that is, to construct the significance of what you read. Critical reading and interpretation is key, and you must exercise your own interpretive powers. Strong writers in the humanities use the findings from their close readings of texts or artifacts to develop an argument or to construct an analysis. Here's a tip. Secondary sources are hugely important in the humanities. So you'll have your primary text, and then you'll have secondary texts, scholars perhaps, who have studied the subject before you. Common humanities assignments rely upon close reading, analysis, and argument. And they include summaries, response pieces, position papers, critical analysis of primary and secondary sources, and research-based projects. Humanities writing, let's imagine that you're taking a course in which you're studying literature. Here's an example of what you might write for a research paper. Examine the role of hands in Shakespeare's Titus Andronicus. If you ever read that play, you will discover that Shakespeare has many references to the human hand, the clasping of hands, and so forth, and there's even a terrible moment in the play in which a hand is severed from a human being. What is the significance of hands beyond just the mention of them? Could be the subject for a research paper. Let's imagine you're taking a course in philosophy. You might be asked to summarize and critique Descartes' argument, I think, therefore, I am. That could be a typical assignment. In a history course, you might be asked to write a critical history of Ronald C. White's A. Lincoln, a, bi a biography. If you were to write mostly in the humanities style and away from VIU online, you would be using the Modern Language Association, or MLA, style. But at VIU online, all courses require APA style. Now let's imagine that you are writing for the social sciences. When doing so, systematic, observable study of human behavior is the key. Texts report the results of quantitative, that's numerical measurements, and qualitative, or non-numerical data, studies. Writers in this discipline question, analyze, and interpret texts, or they design an original study and write a report about it, including background, research questions, a summary of relevant literature, methodology, hypotheses, data and findings, and interpretation. Writing for the social sciences includes summaries, abstracts, literature reviews, reaction pieces, position papers, book reviews, research papers, case studies, and ethnographic studies. And most of the writing in social sciences forms an argument. Examples now of writing in social sciences. Here's a work. It's called Enduring Personal Legacies, The Nature, Antecedents, and Support of Generativity in Leadership, a Case Study of Female Community College Leaders in Midlife. What a long title. 
That was written by yours truly. It was a research project that I published. The social sciences, both at VIU Online and everywhere else in the world, adhere to APA, or American Psychological Association style. Now let's imagine that you are writing for the natural and applied sciences. When doing so, scientists and engineers work with evidence that can be observed, verified, and controlled. Scientists strive for objectivity by using the scientific method, that is, observing or studying a phenomenon, formulating a hypothesis, and testing that hypothesis through controlled experiments and observations. There's an emphasis in this kind of writing on precise, replicable data. And articles often include an abstract in the natural and applied sciences that give an overview of the findings. Literature reviews are an essential first step in any research effort. By that we mean you survey the existing literature on your topic. What are people already aware of? What have they already argued? And you summarize that in a review of relevant literature. Most scientists spend a great deal of time writing research or grant proposals. And if you see yourself working in that discipline or those disciplines, you can expect that some of your time will be writing proposals. Research reports usually include a literature review and discussions of primary research, most often experiments. And a great deal of scientific writing is collaborative. When you read scientific writing, there are strings of authors on a single paper, partly because the work of scientists requires collaboration if it's in laboratory types of settings. The style in natural and applied sciences is at VIU online going to still be APA. But many scientific texts conform to the format and document, documentation style of the Council of Science Editors, also known as CSE. Now let's talk about writing for business. Some writing assignments for business classes will prepare you for the kinds of writing you will face in the business world. These include memos, emails, letters of application, executive summaries, and resumes. Other writing assignments will help you master the theory or practice of business. A good strategy is to keep a clear purpose in mind when you read and write. Are you trying to solve a problem, make a recommendation, or are you trying to gather and synthesize information? At VIU Online, all of your classes expect you to use APA style regardless of discipline. Another important academic writing skill is the ability to write an essay examination. But what does that mean practically? Well, you're no stranger to essay exams, and you have them even in this course, but you certainly will have them in other courses that you take. When preparing for an essay exam, Nothing takes the place of knowing the subject well, of course. A good piece of advice is to review the entire exam before you begin writing and if it's a timed exam to plan your time. Read the question carefully before you begin to answer it. Make sure you understand it fully. Analyze the question looking for key words. What key words? Some like these. Analyze, describe, explain, compare, compare and contrast, define, evaluate, or summarize. Typical essay questions. Think through your answer before you begin writing, and an outline can help you tremendously. Develop a clear thesis and be direct in your response. When writing an in-class essay, for an exam, follow your outline. Develop each major point into at least one paragraph. Clarify the connections among your main points by using transitions. Pause and read what you've written before going on to a new point. 
Rereading may remind you of other ideas while you still have time to include them. Leave enough time at the end of the class period to read through your essay carefully. That's when you're going to find errors or omissions. Now, if you're taking a take-home exam, and certainly in our online course, GEC 101, all of your exams, your midterm and your final, are ones you're going to be tackling at home. These are some tips that will help you. Still plan your time. Don't work right up to the deadline. Clarify any guidelines about how long your answer should be and the format. Clarify how and when you should submit the exam. And allow your writing to, well, I call it marinate. Ideally, let it sit a day before you do your final editing and proofreading. I know marinating is a kitchen term for how we prepare foods for cooking by letting them sit in a sauce or herbs or spices a day or so or hours before we're going to cook it. I like to think of writing that way too. It's tastier when you marinate it. Here is marinating for all writing. Let the time work for you. When I write for publication, I like to leave at least a day between what I've written and the deadline. It's amazing when you come to it with fresh eyes, what you can catch that you couldn't see when you were in the middle of writing it. In some cases, your classes may ask you to create a portfolio of your work. But what does that mean practically? This has become a very popular tool in many classes, especially capstone courses, where you're asked to put together a portfolio of your work. When creating a portfolio, remember that it is a selection of your work, not necessarily all of it. And it could be for a course or even for a job. And it, you should choose the things that you think show off your skills and accomplishments to your best advantage. Plan your portfolio. Choose its purpose, audience, organization, design, and selection criteria. And prepare a written statement that explains and reflects on your own work. Describe for the reader what's in the portfolio and how you selected the items included. Reflect on your strengths and your abilities. Seek feedback responses to your portfolio from classmates, friends, and at least one of your instructors. And then revise your portfolio to improve it. Beyond a classroom, you may find that if you're ever searching for a job that a portfolio is hugely valuable when you go on job interviews. You can bring projects that you've worked on, letters of recommendation, of course your resume, your transcript, papers you've written that show your strengths. Finally, you may find yourself writing to make something happen in the world. But what does that mean practically? Well, we're all in a position to take part in an interesting process of changing the world. And one way to do it is through the writing that you do. To influence the opinion of others, to share your ideas, to shed light on information that other people are missing is a way to make the world change. When you are writing to make something happen in the world, clarify what actions you want your readers to take in response to your writing. It's one thing to get them upset about something or excited about something, but what do you want them to do? What action? Identify the people you most want to reach. Form a connection with your audience and establish with them why they should trust you. Choose the best genre or medium to reach your audience and time your message so it gets into the right hands at the right time. If you do this, your message will be received more favorably. This concludes the practical lecture for week 7.